safely to arrive at home. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Oh, to grace how Great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness as a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy course above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy course above. We gather in the presence of God to encounter love that sets free. We do not come seeking crumbs of justice, but a way of life that liberates. Together, we practice courage in resisting evil and rejecting the temptations of complicity and complacency. The Spirit leads us in power and truth. Our faith is placed in love eternal that lifts broken spirits and brings new life from places of ruin. With hope that is neither narrow nor fragile, we come to follow Christ. Today, we pause to acknowledge the land that was once home to indigenous peoples. On this day, we acknowledge, celebrate, and honor the lives and dignity of indigenous peoples. We repent our sins of stealing this land. We recognize the violent forced removal and genocide perpetrated by our ancestors and the perpetration of the conscious and unconscious harm we all still participate in today. We stand with all indigenous people and their right to self-determination and justice. May we continue to strive towards deconstructing our colonial mindset and practices as we humbly give thanks for this land on this Thanksgiving weekend. As Sarah waited 90 years for a son to fulfill God's promise, we wait in hope for what we thought had been promised to us. As Moses waited 40 years in the desert, being prepared by God to lead his people, we wait for the emptiness and humility for bravado to wither. As Israel waited 40 years in the desert, hungry, depressed, thirsting, unsure, we wait for things to move on and generations to pass. As the prophets waited a thousand years of promises that God would raise up a savior, we wait for things to change. As Mary waited nine months, of her 14 years for a child of God, we feel the birth pangs, yet fear for the child. As John the Baptist waited, scanning the crowds for the one whose sandals he was not worthy to untie, we long for an experience of the divine. As Jesus waited 30 years of creeping time, 40 days in the desert of temptation, three years in the midst of misunderstanding, three days in the depths of hell. So we wait for God's time. Preparing the way, our turn to toil on leveling mountains and straightening paths, our turn to watch the time horizon, our turn to pass on the hope. The one who promised is faithful and will come back. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you.
Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another in the form of a hand gesture. Peace be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you today and all the days to come. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world that you made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, starting at the 64th chapter with the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, 
or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now, consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God and God's Son, Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of Christ. God will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By God, we were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. So truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about this day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When they leave home and put their Workers in charge, each with his own work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O God. Amen. Friends in Christ, keep awake. COVID time is here. Beloved people of God, also Advent time is here. Now in normal times, we all know that we would be gathered together in our worship spaces, beginning to sing some of our favorite holiday time hymns, lighting candles and making plans for all of the things, cookie baking, parties, caroling and tree decorating, to name a few. We also all know that we certainly are not living in a normal time or a normal year. This year, many things feel very different. At Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary, for example, our classes have been online since March 17th, and most of our worship services have also been on Zoom since that time. 
a few of our students even chose to start seminary from their home cities and states and countries instead of moving to Berkeley so that they could be with their families and stay in their own homes. But it's also very interesting that during this pandemic, when we might be called uh, to stay home, to be quiet and to be still, I'm excited to share that at PLTS, we have more students this year who have said yes to God's call and said yes to come to seminary this year than they did last year. We have learned that many things are possible in virtual and digital space than we ever thought before. We're learning that it is possible to have meaningful community online. We've learned that it's possible to do school and learn online. We're also learning that we can have meaningful worship experiences online. We also are learning that we can celebrate all the things, birthdays, anniversaries, ordinations, hello and goodbyes to friends, families, and colleagues. This year, we are also very excited at PLTS to be launching new programs and a brand new Center for Climate Justice and Faith. Friends in Christ, it is a joy and an honor and a privilege to preach with you this morning. And what I hope to share this morning is that I see hope in our church and I see hope in the world. And I believe that together we can put our hope in the spirit of Advent and knowing that God is indeed sending a savior. God is sending Jesus once again to bring light into our hurting world. The world that Jesus was about to enter some 2020 plus years ago has some similarities to the world we are living in today. Mary and Joseph, the disciples, and all the people gathering in the Holy Land were all scared, tired, and waiting. So people of God, let, let this be a reminder that in this pandemic time advent, we enter this space as we are, and this is okay. It is okay that we are scared, that we're tired, and that we are waiting. Our hearts ache. Our hearts ache because we are yearning to gather with loved ones. We're yearning to gather in our congregations and we're yearning to gather with our friends and our families. We probably never had a perfect Christmas, but now we might consider that we have because COVID is here and we know we should not gather as we always have. This is hard, yet we also know and we trust that we can find ways to stay connected. And we also know that we are being called to lean into the holy good news that Jesus is indeed coming. In this pandemic Advent time, people of God, we must find hope. We must seek peace and we must share joy and we must give love as much as possible. The world needs Jesus and needs to hear the gospel message of God's grace and peace more than ever before. This Advent is our time as church to remember our calling and to heed this call to share the light of God with our hurting world. Our work to do this pandemic Advent season is to do what the calling of the church is and has been for more than 2,000 years. Our calling as church together for the sake of the world is to remember the parable of the fig tree and to serve like we have never served before on behalf of the Jesus Christ whose birthday we await with great anticipation and expectation. Because our world is breaking and hurting in ways that only God can comfort and transform. We are living in the chapter of the COVID pandemic 
that we could call winter is coming. We don't see summer yet because we've barely lived through fall. As the fig tree reminds us, seasons change. Trees grow, people move and change, and we all learn. We must have hope that God is sending aid as fast as God can. There is hope that a COVID vaccine will save many lives as the calendar turns to a new year. For more than eight months, we have been living in a state of questions, doubts, and fears while just doing what we can and doing our very best to make it through one day and into the next. I pray to God that as we turn the calendar, as we begin a new church year, I pray that through Advent we receive Christmas and that we turn the page into 2021. That as these things happen, that we realize our call as church is the same as it was pre-COVID, and that we remember that our call will be the same post-COVID. Our call as church together for the sake of the world, we are called together to love and serve one another as God first loved us. Beloved people of God, this is the Advent time when we are called to keep awake. We don't have time to slumber. We definitely don't have time to sleep through winter. And we also don't have time to wait for brighter days. Friends in Christ, I understand that times are hard and times are very different. I also personally understand what it is like to make hard decisions about the holidays, let go of traditions, and to not see family. For example, I was recently on Skype with my two nieces. They are three years old and five years old, and they are truly pure bundles of joy. I love them more than anything else in the world. And I remember last Christmas, telling Merida and Moira, see you next summer. And then summer came and I had to tell them, I really hope to see you at Christmas. Well, now COVID has surged and I found myself on Skype again recently. And Moira, the five-year-old, looked me straight in the face and she said, Auntie, you could get sick if you get on a plane because of the virus. Will you come for Christmas next year? Friends in Christ, this is the reality of the pandemic that we are living in. This is our Advent time. And yet, even though we are living in this time where we are going to need to let go of traditions and we're going to need to make tough decisions, uh, to stay home for the sake of the health and well being of all of God's beloved people. Let us rest in this. May we have faith to trust God that Jesus is once again coming. May we have courage to embrace this time when we are called to stay closer to home. May we know that we are never alone and that in this pandemic Advent time, God needs us to be church more than ever before. Let this be our year to feed people with God's grace and God's mercy. Instead of traveling and buying a lot of gifts this year, consider these things. Maybe send some note cards or messages of hope and joy to people that really need to hear them. Maybe send some money to the homeless, hungry, unemployed, and sick. And friends in Christ, no matter what, let us pray fervently together for the sake of God's beloved people. Keep awake. Advent time is here. All of these things and anything else on our hearts and minds, we lift up to God. Amen. Hi, I'm going to be sharing a contemporary song based on the text for today called You'll Come. I invite you to sing along as you feel comfortable.
Our prayer response comes from our psalm today. I'll end each prayer with, let your light shine, O God, and your response is that we might be saved. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless the social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Let your light shine, O God, that we might be saved. You cause rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Let your light shine, O God, that we might be saved. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Let your light shine, O God, that we might be saved. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image and those whose dignity we have stripped away. Let your light shine, O God, that we might be saved. Pour out the gifts of your Spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's youth ministry and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Be with all who are training to lead your church. Let your light shine, O God, that we might be saved. Thank you, O Lord, for the saints now departed, who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence and those in need around us. Let your light shine, O God, that we might be saved. 
receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God has blessed us with ourselves, our time, and our possessions. During this pandemic time where we are gathered online, I invite you during the offering to make an offering to your congregation, to an organization doing God's work in the world, and also to the seminary to support our students who have said yes to the calling to serve in the church and world as our leaders. Gracious God, receive our offerings and let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. benediction. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Be safe, save lives, share God's love. Go in peace. Christ is with you.